Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. More grace to you. The presence of God be mighty upon you. The angels of the Lord render spiritual service among you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, I was telling us uh, the reason why I am not with you. You have heard it already. My visa interview date was 18th of June. And uh, when we went to uh, American embassy, we discovered that they had written to us the previous day at 7.30 p.m. that it, there was a holiday in America. And so the office would not be opened. So we were not aware since they wrote it in the night. So we arrived at the visa, um, at the, the, the embassy and discovered that there was no work. So it's just like a court case. You come to for, I mean, for your hearing and they say the judge is not on seat and they give you another date. So I have been given another date, which is in August. So we were thinking whether we could apply under emergency to see whether by Monday or latest Tuesday we would hear anything from them. But all true, we did not hear anything. Now, um, in my characteristic way, I didn't feel troubled. Although I'm concerned, I want to be among you. But I felt that God was in the new house, is in the new house. Because God either does a thing or allows it. He does a thing by his direct will. He allows things by his permissive will, but all in his wisdom. So I have the feeling there is a reason why I'm not among you physically. Whatever the reason, I can assume many for myself, but none unto God are all his works from the beginning of the earth. Having known God so much like that, I didn't get troubled because I said to myself, that which is to be done in this conference shall be done. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Uh, there's something on which God trained us. The message you listen to uh, told us that I was to be in Belgium some years ago for a program in Europe. But we couldn't get the visa. Just uh, what repeats now in America. And the Lord said, he wouldn't want me to be the focus of attention by himself. He wouldn't want people to feel that where Pastor Porica is not, things will not go. He would rather want the people to feel that, to see that where he is not, things will not go. And uh, he wouldn't want the people to fall into the prey of uh, what other preachers have done to their congregations, that they are the image they're looking for, not Jesus. So it might be also, I don't know, that the Lord wants to train you to look to him absolutely and not to fix your mind on your leader, although he is your leader, so that you will not fall uh, according to the steps of those other people in other denominations. So if that be this, the case, we give honor to God. Let his name alone be worshiped because he is our eternal life. He is all we need. He is all we are gathered for. Yes, he is our healing. He is our deliverer. He is our provider. He is our wisdom. He is all in all. So with him, we are content, satisfied, 
filled and complete. In him, all fullness dwells. That is our God. So, I bless him that I have opportunity to minister to you via Zoom, which is another training the Lord has given to us for conference. Maybe it's another exploitation. By this, work will increase more to places I have not gone I may not go physically. I have made provision for prayer warriors and uh, those who minister deliverance for you. Every after program, as you end, uh, they will come in for their work in Zoom to minister along with those people selected over there among you for those who are in need. So the prayer warriors are here in Zoom to attend to your needs, to your deliverance case to minister to your prayer needs so that all things should look complete. And I too on Sunday morning will be ministering to you on healing miracles and deliverance. So all will go well in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, I bring to you this message, contending with the darkness of the Western world for your salvation, holiness, and heaven. Contending with the darkness of the Western world for your salvation, holiness, and heaven. May we bow our head for prayer. Almighty Father, we are grateful because you have blessed the people. The presence of the Lord has come down upon them. The grace of the Lord is flowing on them like the, the air that is blowing over them. Lord Jesus, do your work, be exalted. We have directed all eyes unto you. Oh, Lord, possess your people. And as your word goes forth, do your wonders among them. Change hearts. Restore souls. Defeat the powers of darkness. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, the Western world refers to the first world, the developed world. Yes. And we are saying, contending with the darkness of the Western world for your salvation, holiness, and heaven. You hearing me now in America, some may be connected from Europe, anywhere. Over there, we call them the Western world because they are developed. They see themselves as civilized. They're the ones leading other parts of the world. They are technologically advanced. So they, that's how they are. We have seen the benefit of the Western world. One, it provides education and enlightenment to the other part of the world. Yes, it is a place of training, a place of um, knowledge and understanding as far as material world is concerned. It provides jobs. Many people live from the third world to the Western world for jobs. Yes, of course, you know the power of the dollar, pound, euro. Many struggle for this because of material wealth. That is being done. And you are there now. One reason or the other has taken you there. Some have gone for settlement because it appears to be crisis free. It's so big, like a ship, that even if it is shaking, the people inside may not feel it. That is what it provides security to the people. But I want to say the Western world is spiritual graves as far as spirituality. Is concerned as far as the souls of men is are concerned it is a graveyard for those that will go to hell the western world a graveyard now i am saying contending with the darkness of the western world contending because i'm speaking to people that are alive People that are listening to me now, 
people that are hearing me from the Western world, I am saying you are in the dark side of the world, very dark. The light of electricity cannot lighten the darkness of that side. I'm talking about the darkness of sin. It is a world dominated by the devil. I'm going to give you the characteristic of the Western world so you understand what I am saying. Number one, they have given themselves to sin and do not want to retain God in their knowledge. They have given themselves completely to sin and Satan and will not want to retain God in their knowledge. In the book of Romans chapter 1, I read verse 21 all through to verse 29. The Bible tells us, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Can you see that? Their imagination was useless. Hmm. Their imagination had no profit spiritually. The thoughts of their hearts, what formed them and formed their society, their thoughts have no spiritual benefit. The Bible calls it vain. And it says, and their foolish heart, saying their thoughts are foolish. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That is a major characteristic of the Western world. There is no God. And the Bible terms that foolishness. And it goes to say, and their foolish heart was darkened. Can you now see the darkness we're talking about? It is not the darkness of the atmosphere because of the atmosphere, we have electricity in the Western world that does not dim, that is not put off, but the darkness of the mind of men. Darkness, completely no light. God is not there. God is not imagined. God is not taught about. That's what the scripture is saying. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and they see themselves wise. Hey. They see themselves wise. A particular madman, as I had the story, naked as he was going, was laughing. And somebody said, the madman was laughing. How could a, a human being be putting on clothes? God made you naked. When you came out of your mother's home, were you having clothes upon you? Well, you look at these people. Look at them going. Look at them going. He was laughing at them. But I am the original man. I am as my mother gave birth to me. Even as God created me. But look at these other people. Can you see what the Bible says? To him he is wise. But he's a fool. That is the state of the Western world. I'm talking about America. I'm talking about those civilized countries. Ethnically civilized. The Bible calls them foolish because how do you live without God? The fool has said in his heart, there's no God. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed bees and creeping things. You might consider that as the money, the currency, the hard currency, the dollar. Everybody is living for it. All that concerns them is the dollar. Oh, come to Europe, the pound, the euro, and in some of these other world, they have their own currency. Oh, in fact, all of them, all the Western world, the dollar has lifted up its head above them. So, the, all, that is what their attention is on. Many have not been able to come to conference because of the dollar. Yes, we have for God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. God gave them up. It's not by force that you should serve the Lord. It's not by force that you should go to heaven. No. It's not by force that you should escape hell. 
No, if you want to go, go. If you want to go to heaven, you'll be helped to go. If you don't want, stay. God gave them ah to the reprobate man. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forevermore. For this cause, God gave them ah unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burnt in their loss one toward another, men with men, walking that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was mixed, homosexuality, lesbianism, bestiality, all kinds are going on there. God gave them up to a life of conscienceless living. No conscience. Conscience is troubling nobody. Abortions legalized. Every kind of thing. Yes, sexual life is like animals on the streets. God gave them up. Which means even the convicting work of the Holy Ghost is not working much in that environment. Whom do we convict? Even the convicting work of the Holy Ghost is minimal. So it's a very terrible environment, actually. Very terrible. Yes. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them up. You see, in three places, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every matter is established. In three places, gave them up. Gave them up. Gave them over. It is for you to know that, that you are in this conference, that the Holy Ghost moved you, that you receive conviction at all about your sin. You must be one of the fortunate persons living in the Western world because the activity of the Holy Spirit is minimized. The convicting work of the Holy Spirit is minimized. One, the people are not interested. The people willingly are not interested. How do you carry your product to sell in where there's no market? Why? Why? I don't want to say that. There's no market. There's no market. So it appears, therefore, that you're wasting so, time. It appears. Why don't you go to where there's market? Where the people in their poverty will be crying to God. Where the people in their needs will be crying to God. Where God will sell more. Where the Holy Ghost will sell more. We're wasting time where you don't have people to buy. No customers. No patronage. That's why the work of the Holy Spirit in the Western world is minimized. I'm saying that you got born again in the Western world. Congratulations. Because it's scarce. The people are really meant for hell. It's very scarce. Where did you find that product? Because, no, I remember when I was in South Tome and Principe, a small country in West, in, uh, in Central Africa, the people were asking Dangote, a business tycoon in Nigeria, to come there for, 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 for business. And the whole, in fact, that country is just a local government in Nigeria. Dangote said, what would I come and do to do in a local government in Nigeria? a people of not up to 500,000 people. What business do I come and do there? So I'm telling you, the people are not there. It's a desert land that you got salvation in the Western world, that you're keeping salvation in the Western world. Congratulations to you. That place is not favorable. That place is not favorable. 
God gave them out. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness. That's their, their state. Imagine any kind of iniquity is there in America. Check it. Check it up in the hospitals, in the stoves, on the street, in the schools, in, in offices. Imagine any kind. So now you look at a place like this. They don't want to retain the knowledge of God. The Bible also gives us a description in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, concerning their state. I'm saying this so that you should know that you narrowly escape if you have salvation. Because it's the normal thing not to have it. That at that time, ye were without Christ, being aliens, being aliens from the common world of Israel and strangers of the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, Western world. No hope, no God. Strangers to spiritual things. A desert place. No hope, no God. Which street will you follow to smell God? Whose garden will you go to to see God? Which church do you go to to feel the angels around? That's the state. Brother, I'm saying this, that you should value the grace of God in your life, that you are in Christ. Sister, value the grace of God in your life. That you are in Christ. You are not supposed to be in Christ like others. By virtue, by nature of your society. God really went extra mile to get at you. God did it. Appreciate him. The Bible tells us in chapter 4 of Ephesians. Verse 18 and 19. Having the understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to walk all uncleanness with greediness the spirit of the nature and in the western world yes the understanding is darkened you want I can't understand that some boys were moving on the streets of America and they were saying they couldn't understand some people that would be thinking somebody is there in the upstairs. What, what, what understanding? Why would it foolish? Somebody to say there is a God in the upstairs talking about heaven. I say their understanding is darkened. The darkness of the Western world. Ignorance is in them. With all that is written in the Bible, they are not aware. The teachings of the Bible, they're not aware. <laughs> Just imagine California, they want to take the Bible to court because that the Bible is disturbing them. Can you see drunken people? Can you imagine that? You will take Bible to court that was written before you were born. That was written before there was a nation called America. They would take it to court. You, you begin to wonder ignorant because of the ignorance that is in them being past feeling is like somebody is paralyzed if you in if you pierce him through with a sharp nail he does not feel it that's their state they commit sin without feeling it they do evil without feeling it conscience is dead western world the state their feeling has passed. They are not feeling anymore. And what, what are their rulers busy doing? <laughs> their rulers are busy planning how to make the society more godless. Even that those people who come in as strangers into them, into their nations, should drop God completely. That is what they are planning. Their rulers. Proverbs chapter 2. I read verse 1 to 3. 
That is what the rulers are doing. That's what they're sitting down and planning. Why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. That's their plan. Let's break the band of God. Let's cut out, cast away his cords. Let anything that is called God disappear. And they're going to promulgate in laws that by virtue, by reason of these laws, you who want God will not be able to hold him. You who want to serve God will not be able to hold him, will not be able to serve him because they, they, they intertwined even the very air of the environment with lies. The walking places, are, the buildings are built with the sand and mud of lies. So that you should just become used to telling lies. I'm telling you so that you should know that survival is of the fittest. The Christianity the Lord has brought through holiness revival movement is just the type you need in America. It's just the type you need in the Western world because we're taking God by force. We're taking righteousness by force. We are not ready to go back home and go into the spirit of the Western world. By the way, they are not supposed to be saved. Go back home. Go back and join your people. Opa. Otherwise, the people we want to go with now are people who have said like Esther, if I perish, I, will, I perish. Not minding uh, uh, King Ahasuerus. His loads. These are the people we're looking for. These are the people we're speaking to now. We're dividing you into two. One for God. One back to Satan. Because you must take it by force. That environment doesn't favor Jesus. It doesn't favor the Holy Ghost. It doesn't favor the Creator God. It does not favor the Bible. It doesn't. That's what you know. See what the kings are doing. See their planning. See what the United Nations are doing. See what, see what, see what the presidents are doing. The Senate. The lawmakers. See what they're promulgating. See what they're agreeing to be done. See the future plan. They are not making provision for God. The one that called the name of God should be should be removed. That is the Western world. Job, Job 21, verse 13 to 15. Job 21, verse 13 to 15. The Bible tells us, Western world, here, yeah. They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. <clears throat> they spend their days in wealth and in, a, and in a moment go down to hell. Therefore, they say unto God, depart from us. For we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. Hmm. Have you heard? Have you heard what they are saying around you? Have you heard what they are talking to God in their secret places and openly in your neighborhood, in your workplaces, in the market, in the judiciary? among the legislatures, among the executives. Depart from us, God, we don't know what your ways. Yes. And they continue. What is the almighty that we should serve him? What is the almighty that 
we should serve him. That is what they're saying. Yes. And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? We don't need prayer. If we move prayer from schools, <laughs> what, what would that be doing? It's nonsense. That's what they want to say. Churches must preach. No church must preach against gay. No church must do. I'm telling you. Western world. Western world. Diverse laws have been promulgated. It is the world of antichrist. It is anti-Christian world. In Isaiah 30 verse 8 to 11, anti-Christian. I want you to know your environment and pray. Yes, pray with tears every day and say, God, reserve me here. Preserve me here. And if my time is over, they will turn me home. Yes. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 8 to 11. Now go, write it before them in a book and note it. Write, write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seer, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Anti-Christian. They tell all those Christian preachers to stop those gems. We don't want to hear. You don't have other entertainment. You don't know how to make us laugh. Well, don't disturb the conscience of anybody here. We will take you to court if you are disturbing our conscience. That's what they tell them. Tell us some jokes. Let's laugh and go. Let's relax ourselves. Who told you that we're looking for heaven? Is there heaven? That is the situation. And many preachers that came from the third world with gospel of righteousness perished because they swallowed them up. They're really causing the Holy One of Israel to cease from among them. Now, how the star a state of people like this. What do you mean by having people from among them that should be saved? What do you mean that a people among these people can be holy? How do you think a people from among them can reach heaven? It's like the Lord passed Ezekiel around a valley full of dry bones. And Ezekiel saw them and they were very dry. And, Ezekiel, and the Lord asked Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones leave? Shall these bones leave? Is God, Ezekiel said, Down the west. It's only him that really knows. It's only God that knows how that righteousness can still come out from there. That people can still be gotten from him. Gotten for him. That is why you came out of it. Now, such people that are born again are more in, in this Western world, such people that are holy in this Western world, such people that are heavy worthy in this western world that have even met heaven. What does the Bible describe them? I see the Bible describing them in Revelation chapter 7. Verse 13 to 17. 
And one of the elders answered saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes and winds came day? John saw multitudes of people in heaven. The angel said, what are they? Which are they arrayed in white raiment? And he said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. I thank you for that type of answer. Ezekiel gave it. John learned from it. Thou knowest. And he said unto me, he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. They came out of America. I'm telling you. They, he that overcome it shall not be hurt of the second day. They came out of the Western world with demonic supervision, with laws that natural man has no wisdom to escape, laws that quench righteousness, laws that threaten the righteous. But this came out of them. Great tribulation and have washed their robes. They are born again. Washed their robes that you can be saved in America is a possibility. Though it's not easy. The number is few. The environment is not favorable. But you can be saved there. Out of great tribulation. You can be born again there out of great tribulation. Wash your clothes from the dust of America. Yes, from the pollution of the air. Wash your robes. Born again. And make them white in the blood of the Lamb. Sanctified and made holy. Make them white, sanctified, washed, sanctified, out of great tribulation. That's only God that can achieve this. That's why you must stick to God. Those who are lazy to grab God cannot make it. You cannot grab God sleeping. Day and night, you cannot make it. Because the place is too fortified against righteousness. They that stay with God can make it. They that look to him every day can make it. They that hunger and taste after him can make it. They that call upon his name shall make it. And only they. Therefore, are they before the throne of God that have come to heaven? Born again, sanctified, have met heaven. Out of great tribulation, they met it to heaven. I congratulate every man among you that is righteous in America. In the Western world, I congratulate you. Righteous in Canada, in Jamaica. Righteous, I congratulate every sister that is truly righteous. Truly, 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 I congratulate you. Because it's not easy. Many pastors are not righteous. America cannot allow it. Many elders of churches cannot, are not righteous. The environment cannot allow it. Many choir members are not righteous. Satan cannot allow it. But if you are righteous, congratulations. 
I tell you, it's a good congratulation. And that the Bible says, therefore, I did before the throne of God and seven day I die in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell with them in heaven. Wonderful. You met it? You mean <laughs> you met it to heaven from America? Congratulations. The environment is not suitable. It is like you pass mathematics wonderfully and that you got 100%. Cool? You got 100% in mathematics. Hmm. Wonderful. A mathematics that people jump through the window. You got 100%. You are, you are special. You met heaven in America. I'm telling you, you are special. Grace of God is abundant. If you were in these other places, you, you would be a hero. Because your commitment required extra. Your dedication requires extra. Yes, you are in the kingdom of Ahasuerus. That you broke through required extra. Extra commitment. Extra dedication. Extra fervency. Extra faith. Yes. And they shall hunger no more. Neither taste any more. Neither shall the sun light on them. Nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne. Shall feed them. And shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Yes, actually you cried because. You forwent many things. You rejected many things that are, were favorable to man just to keep yourself. You stood firm. You, you meant business to do your restitution and never mind, you never minded imprisonment. You never minded repatriation. You meant it. You really meant it. And that's how you got it. I want to say this so that you should know the cost of salvation. The cost. It costs to be saved. So that you can be prepared for it. If you want to be born again, you should know that it's not casual thing you're doing. That casual thing you're doing is not the one because they... they <laughs> You, that, you warm your water and you expose them to the air in America. It will get cold in a, in a moment. It will get cold in a moment. Put that water back in fire if you're not using them. Using it now. Otherwise, the value of heating it shall not be there. I'm talking about the winter of America. Yes. If you mean to be saved, come out and be saved. Come out and confess your sins. Come out and grab Jesus fully, really. Otherwise, that play you are playing is not for salvation in America. It can never restore you back to Christ. The Jesus you got in Africa, you will never get it there. With all this thing you're doing, cannot work. The environment will not, it's not suitable. The amount of demons that are there more are more than it is other side of other side of the world. That is a ruling place. It is a principality ruling other parts of the world. So the powers that are there are not ordinary. If you want to be saved, be saved. If you want to confess your sin, confess it. Don't play shame. You will not. It no work. Don't practice self-respect. It will not work. You will not succeed.
Yes. The devil awaits the bait of the man child. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 to 6. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 to 6. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12, 12 stars. And she being with child, cried, traveling in bed, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. America. There are forces that are prepared, waiting for people that will be born again to catch them up immediately and squeeze out life from them. Among you there are witches and wizards, the Lord revealed them, that have come for this conference. They have come to see newcomers so that they can pursue them. They have come to see those who want to give their lives to Christ. I'm talking about America. The Lord reveal you. You which the Lord told me about you. I'm planning about you. I am planning that you will never, holiness revival movement will not keep you. I'm saying it. Be informed. God will answer my prayer over your life that you think all the effort we're doing, you will, you will waste our effort. You will be wasted yourself. God will remove you. God will remove you. God will remove you. God will destroy your power. He will squeeze you. He will clear you out from all in his revival movement. He will do it. He will do it. That our labor should be in vain. Because you are in America. You have joined witchcraft there. You are looking for promotion of dollars. You are looking for cultic promotion. Judgment will overtake you there. Judgment from God. Oh Lord, don't spare them. Don't spare them. The, the devil was waiting for the man child to be born. I'm talking about a terrible place like that. They are rejoicing. Hey, Pastor Rika didn't come. Is God a plan so that he can trap you? That's the world. That's the world. Therefore, but it's as soon as this child was born, the Lord cut up the child. It is the power of God that will frustrate the plan of the wicked. Now, you man, you want to serve God? The environment is not suitable. Therefore, look to God to protect you. Seek refuge for your life. They have planned never to allow your Christianity to prosper. They have plans to squeeze out salvation from you. Run quickly to the tower of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it to it and is saved. The righteous run it to it and is saved. The Lord has brought you to holiness movement to save your spiritual life. Otherwise, dragoon. Is already 
ready to swallow you up immediately and clear away the salvation in your life. I told you the environment is not easy. And therefore, salvation in the Western world. Yes, is as the, 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 it is as David rescuing a lamb from the lion and from the bear. Because the lion is roaring about, seeking whom to devour. It will take a place where there is the David shepherd. The kind of shepherd like David that can snatch you out of the hand of the lion. Hand of witches and wizards. Hand of occulting people. Higher powers. Yes. It's not easy. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17. David gave the testimony. About the exploit, he said. Yes. And verse 34. To 37. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the floor. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the mouth, out of the power of the lion and out of the power of the bear, he shall deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord shall be with thee. I'm telling you, is this snatching out of the life? Otherwise, how can you be, go to heaven in America? It's snatching you too busy over work. You walk five in five places, running after dollar. No time for Jesus is to snatch you from that money. Snatch you from the God of America. Money, dollar, snatch you from it so you can go to God. And go to heaven. It is salvation as by fire. Jude verse 23. Jude. Verse 23. And others said with, fat, with fear. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment. Spotted by the flesh. Pulling them. The Lord grant us grace to pull people out of American power to bring them to salvation of Jesus so that they can go to heaven. Pull them because the forces are strong. The forces are strong. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Yes, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. <clears throat> If you see how we got that campground, you're sitting there. 
it was by violence. Violence. Violent prayer. That that place was snatched from the hand of the devil. Otherwise, Satan means that we will not get that calm ground. Hey, wonderful. Heaven, heaven received prayers and thundered down upon Winston Salem and upon the corners of America to release that calm ground for you. They, they don't want righteousness. They don't want the truth. But mean business. Stand up around. Coordinators. You just have to stand. Otherwise, you will not be fit for this work. This work is not looking for lazy people. Fearful people. Or people who, show, who don't show that they are born again. You cannot be it. You cannot do it. You can't. You must dress up. If we don't take it by force, it will not work. It will not work. And you don't have any power to resist it. We don't want to die again. As others have died. They were weak. Therefore, the gods of America took them over. We will not give that time. My brethren, receive power. I say, receive power. Let the power of the Lord come upon your life. Let strength from heaven cover you up. Let boldness fill you up. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost descend upon your life. May the Lord burn up all dross in your life. Take the Christianity by force. Mean business to serve the Lord. Contain against the darkness of the Western world. Lay hold on your salvation. Lay hold on holy life. Lay hold on heaven. Eternal life. The Lord grant you victory. The Lord grant you victory. The Lord grant you success. The Lord grant you a free flow from, from the earth until you enter the clouds of heaven. And sit with him in his own throne. And then he will feed you. He will care for you. He will nurse you. He will bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now let's rise up upon our feet for prayer. Rise up upon your feet. And tell the Lord, you are ready to take Christianity by force. You are ready to take Christianity by force. Not all those, uh, what do we call it? Sluggish thing you're doing. It's not that one. Satan will not allow it to go anywhere. You must overcome all those thoughts and temptations of immorality, drunkenness and pornography. Overcome, break them down and deliver yourself. Take it by force. Lesbianism, homosexuality, terminate those things. Cast them far from your life. The righteous must take it by force. Contain. 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 Fight to get yourself 
fight to deliver yourself. Break those forces of darkness. And as a church, we must contend against the forces of witchcraft. Open up your prayers. I want to hear you people pray. Thank you, Jesus. Pour your power upon your children. Pour your power upon your children. Let them be serious in serving Jesus. Let them be serious, committed, committed, committed. Let them go beyond the powers of the environment. Let them receive power from on high. Breakthrough, breakthrough to serve Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let the Holy Ghost teach them Christianity above America. Above that of the Western world. That you will find people among them saved, sanctified, ready for heaven. Open your prayers. I want to hear it. Just worship my girl. Jesus, do it for your children. Jesus, do it for your children. Jesus, do it for your children. Thank you. Hallelujah. Jesus, Lord divine, we worship. God, move among them, move among them, move among them. Empower them to serve you with strength, dedication. Thank you, my father. 
Thank you, my Jesus. Worship my God. Take Christianity by force. Ask for grace. Ask for grace. Thank you, my Father. You are God. Thank you, Lord. God, put your strength to your children. Put your strength to your children. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now I am praying for you. Contending with the darkness of the Western world. I'm going to break the power of darkness around you. I'm praying that the victory of the Lord will come upon your life. You will serve Jesus. You will live righteous. All those forces of immorality that are forcing it into your life. The Lord burn it up with his fire. All those thoughts, all those fears, go root them out of your out of your life. Hallelujah! Just raise up your hand before the Lord and say, "Lord, here am I. Do it for me." Oh, all over the world. The spirit is moving all over the world as the prophet said it should be all over the world there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea right now in our midst the spirit is moving right now in our midst as the prophet said it should be right now in our midst there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Right now in Oremo, the spirit is moving. Right now in Oremo, as the prophet said it should be. Right now in Oremo, there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Almighty Father, right now in Oremo, the spirit is moving. Right now in Orimo, there is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. My God, I am praying for your brethren in the Western world. Where Satan has magnified himself. You say to some place, it is the seat of Satan. The seat of Satan. Oh God. I pray every satanic hand upon any of your child, any of your children, I terminate it. Terminate it. I break it. In the name of Jesus. 
Oh Lord divine, you set your dry bones sleep. Thou knowest, I prophesy to dry bones. All ye dry people, all ye dry people, living in that western world, that the spirit of the Lord is away from you. You are dead. You are but sleeping. I pray for a new thing to come up. A new thing to come up. A new energy to come up. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord divine. Let your power. Break the power of Satan among them. Break the power of Satan among them. Oh Lord let your angels move around. All those in the Zoom. All those in the conference center. Let there be the wind of God blowing around you, putting strength into you, putting life into you, recovering you in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, my father, all those enemies that have come there and say, we're coming to see any new man. We're coming to see any zealous person. We're coming to see. Dominate them. Dominate them. Terminate them. Break the group. Set fire upon them. In Jesus' name. Oh Lord Divine, let these people reap greatly from you. Let your people receive rewards from you. Let the people receive blessings from you. Let the people receive renewal from you. Let the people receive refreshing from you. Thank you, Jesus. Begin your work. Oh, in Jesus' name, we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683 four three two three you can also reach us through our email address holiness revival movement at gmail.com god bless you for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe.
You are the living Savior. Savior. Jesus, I believe. 